everyone. It's good to have you this, this morning. Glad that you're here. This is the Sunday right after Thanksgiving. And uh, today we, we've ch chosen to uh, encourage people to watch it online. Of course, we've got some folks that are here, and so praise the Lord for that. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to make anyone stay at home, that's for sure. But we do want to play it safe, and so that's why we've done it like this. But it's good to have everyone today. Good to have you, you that are online. We're going to start this, this morning and sing hymn number 85, Just Over in the Glory Land. Come on now, sing it with me. Here we go on the first. Here we go. I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. All right, now, now be careful, your toe may start tapping. All right, it's a good song to sing. Lift it up together on the last with the blood washed throng. Here we go. With the blood washed throng, I will shout and sing just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord, my King. Just over in the glory land. Here we go now. Just over in the glory land. The happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land Folks, we're singing about heaven this morning. Hallelujah for that. And uh, you can't help but get excited when you talk about heaven, when you think about heaven. And uh, praise the Lord for that. It's good to have you today in the house of the Lord. Let's go ahead and let's start out this morning with a word of prayer, all right? Lord, thank you so much that we can assemble ourselves here uh, this morning. Lord, I know that a lot of people are, are watching online, and Lord, we appreciate that. And Lord, we're just trying to do what is best, what is right, and Lord, sometimes that's difficult in times uh, th that we're living in right now. But Lord, we just pray that your will be done. We, we pray that you'll bless the word of God as, as it, it has already gone forth already this morning. And Lord, once again, as we preach the word of God, Lord, have, uh, may it find lodging in the hearts of people. And may your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, whether you were standing on... Uh, on, online or not, but uh, uh, you can sit there at your couch or whatever the case may be. Good to have you today, and I hope everyone is doing well. I tell you, it has been such a whirlwind uh, here lately. Uh, uh, first of all, with our decision of, of uh, going online for a while. And we did not have, uh, uh, last, uh, last uh, Wednesday, we did not have services at all. We, uh, we, we had canceled, though, and normally we do that, or at least move it, uh, but this year we just canceled it. Uh, of course, we had Thanksgiving uh, on Thursday, and I hope everyone had a great time with their families. But on, uh, and then right after that, we went into two funerals, and, uh, and so it's been a whirlwind of, of, of pace and just trying to uh, do what needs to be done, but... Uh, we're very thankful for those that were uh, able to help with uh, the uh, Callaway funeral. And, and I know many of our folks at the church did not get to go. And obviously, we're all, we were also dealing with uh, this whole COVID situation and a limited number. And, and, and just the fact that it was just so, so quick uh, when we finally got the information. But 
But we pray and trust that uh, uh, you'll continue to pray for the Callaway family. Pray also for the Tagua family. Uh, as uh, 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 we were a part of uh, uh, the uh, funeral uh, there uh, in uh, Trafalgar, actually. And uh, Gavin uh, Tagwa's great-grandmother passed away. And, and uh, so we hope and pray that uh, you would remember that family as they uh, deal with, with uh, the home going of their grandmother. And I know they would appreciate it very much, okay? Well, church, I tell you, it is... Uh, it, uh, it has been a little uh, confusing on, uh, well, when should we meet, preacher? And, and, uh, and so I'm going to try to run through this again and just try to make it as clear as possible. And probably when I get through, it will still be clear as mud. But anyway, um, you know, obviously it is my heart's desire that we always meet together. That's just always the desire. But... With, uh, with the uh, situation, the uh, upspike of the COVID, uh, all we, the fact that we have a, an older congregation, just trying to be as careful as we can. And so what we've done is our Sunday evening service, our Wednesday evening services are online. Uh, we're not meeting here in the building. But now on Sunday morning for uh, first of all, Brother Jack's class, uh, their Sunday school is having their Sunday school online. Brother Jack is, is here at 10 o'clock and he's preaching and teaching. And, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, that's happening. Now, I will say this. If you have no way of listening uh, to Brother Jack online, then you're more than welcome to come and sit in the auditorium. I don't have a problem with that. We're not going to stop anybody from coming. Uh, it's just, you know, but we don't want you to risk anyone or whatever. And so you're more than welcome to, to, listen, to, to listen at home if, if that would make you feel, you know, better. But, uh, but then at the 11 o'clock service, uh, we are encouraging people. Uh, this coming Sunday, a week from today, uh, to come on in. We're going to at least take that service and meet together. And so uh, that's what's happening. So this coming Lord's Day, a week from today at 11 o'clock, uh, you know, we encourage you to come. And, and again, I, I, will, I will say to you, if you don't have, like even tonight, you know, if you don't have a way of listening then you just come and sit in the auditorium. Not a problem. Don't have a problem with that. But, uh, well, but the, you know, we're trying to do this just to be safe and, and hopefully give it a little bit of time to get through this very busy uh, month of, of December. And hopefully we can come out on the end of it uh, back up and running and doing all the things that we need to do. Uh, but uh, so... If you have any questions about this, just, just let me know and, and we'll, we'll try to answer them the best we can. But, but we are very thankful for the fact that we are able to do this. We're very thankful that, that uh, I, I believe we've got a lot of the bases covered as far as, you know, uh, people are hearing, hearing, or at least they can if they want to, it's, it's there available. So, so we invite you to to participate as much as you can, and, and we hope and pray it'll be a blessing. But keep in mind, um, um, tonight, you know, we'll be preaching here, and it's going to go out online. Uh, and uh, Wednesday night, we'll be preaching here, and you'll be able to see it live. And so, uh, but uh, this coming Sunday, we at 11 o'clock, we invite everyone to come, and at least let's gather together at that time. Uh, and uh, so uh, we hope and pray that will be a blessing to you, okay? All right. Um, well, church, uh, we're going to sing another song, hymn number 125, hymn number 125. Jesus is coming again, hymn number 125, and, you know, we sang about heaven earlier. Well, 
Jesus is coming again because he's going to come to take us to heaven one of these days. And uh, all of that's going to be in our, my sermon this morning, so you'll get, you'll get a lot of dose of it, all right? But hymn number 125, sing it with me on the first. Here we go. Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, and maybe Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. Good song. Come on, you got to get into it. There's got to be a smile on your face somewhere. Come on now, let's go. Give it all you've got, even if you crack. I'll probably crack, that's okay. Sing with me on the last, here we go. Standing before him at last, trials and troubles all past. <coughs> Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. the Lord. Oh, doggy. Thanks to Sister B for helping out there. <laughs> Boy, when you're singing along there and you got a cough, you just got a cough. I tell you, it just is what it is. Well, praise the Lord. I tell you, I know that people are, are um, uh, you know, we still got folks recovering from COVID and uh, you got to be uh, in prayer for them and they and and you ought to be thankful that uh, you have not caught it I tell you uh, but it is a very real and serious situation and so we we uh, just want you to be very careful but I am very thankful that my daughter and her husband's here and they're able to help out and uh, Bethany and I are going to sing and so and then I'll be preaching so May the Lord bless you. Sheltered in the arms of God. Beautiful song uh, as we sing. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must try. I have no fear when Jesus is beside me.
Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so very thankful for the precious truths of the Word of God that we can count on them and that even when we go through difficult days and hard times that we know that there is a God, our God, that is there with us, that is beside us all along the way and praise the Lord for that. We want to welcome you to Northern Park Baptist Church. We want to thank you for joining with us online. And for the few uh, folks that are here in the auditorium, I appreciate you. Boy, it's always good to be able to look at somebody when you're preaching. Uh, you know, the, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, for the most part, it's, it's always a blessing to see your face. Now, there are sometimes some people's faces... You know you're in trouble, and like, you know, I won't mention the name, <laughs> but uh, it is so good to be here and praise the Lord. If you would take your Bible this morning and turn to the book of First Thessalonians in chapter number four. <clears throat> I believe the word of God is always alive and well. I know at times maybe the the Word of God can be dry. It might at least appear that way. But the Word of God is always alive and it always can speak to hearts. Maybe not always how we think it, think it, it may do it. But God's Word is always true and, and it always does what it needs to do. And I'm so very thankful for it. You know, there are times when, uh, like for example, Psalms 23. I cannot tell you how many times that I have, I have made reference to that or I have read that or I've gone to that. And it's almost like, folks, I tell you, even though I've been there many, many times, there's always something good and fresh and new. I tell you, praise the Lord. You know what it is, don't you? It's kind of like a well that boy, every time you go to the well, there's just another bucket full of, 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 of fresh uh, uh, truths and, and comforts and joy there for you. You know, God's well never runs dry. Now, yours and mine, yeah, ours does. That's why we need to always keep going to God all the time to get filled up because he never runs dry. But boy, we do, don't we? We really do. Well, 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 4, and, and, I, and at least to me, and I tell you, this is not a, a, a new passage for me. It's such a blessing, but, but uh, I was, uh, had the privilege of preaching uh, uh, on, on Friday, and I used this text. And uh, I tell you, uh, in honor of Brother Fred, uh, I... Uh, I, I the Lord gave me a message 
that was uh, just a little bit new. And, uh, and so this morning we're going to preach out of that text. And I hope and pray that maybe it might be refreshing to you as well. You know, we sang the song uh, just a while ago, uh, just up in glory land. And boy, I tell you, what, a, what, a, what an exciting truth that is to, to believe, to know that heaven's your home. Amen? That, that you don't have to wonder, I wonder if I'm going to make it there. No, no, that song is written with the no-so, I'm going to be there. One of these days, I'm going to be there. Praise the Lord. It's, it's wonderful to have that kind of belief. Well, let's get started this morning. 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 4. And uh, let me read our text. Then we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into it. I don't know. Can the preacher preach shorter sermons with less people? Well, we'll see. I don't know. But uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and, and verse, uh, verse number uh, 14 and uh, I'll just read one verse here. The Bible says this. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The title of the message this morning is, For if we believe. For if we believe. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, please. Father, I pray that you'll bless us. You'll challenge our faith. Dear God, that you will lead us to, to uh, Lord, uh, move in our faith and, and to handle situations of life according to our faith. Uh, and Lord, I pray that you are blessed and have your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, believe it or not, this particular text, this particular text, part of, of, of chapter 4 is actually dealing with the Lord coming back. And because of that, there were those, and I don't know about you, but amen about the Lord coming back. I love the song we just sang, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, hey, it may be soon. I tell you, I'm looking forward to that no matter when it is. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready when he comes? That's important. Well, we find, though, that because of the subject matter of the Lord coming back, there were those families there were, that had lost loved ones, and they were concerned, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to our loved ones, and what's going to happen when that day comes, when, when the Lord comes back? And so the Apostle Paul begins to address that situation. You know, as, as I have said so many times before, when, I, when, when, you, when as a preacher you stand um, uh, at a funeral and you declare uh, the word of God, I tell you what a blessing it is that the, the deceased was someone that knew the Lord, that, that claimed the promises of God. And oh, I tell you, it is, it is, it is just so sweet to be able to expound upon the word of God in that light. Well, in this case, and, 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 and in this message, uh, may we look at it, you know, because we believe, you know, so with that truth, in other words, the truth uh, that the Lord is coming back, there were those who wanted to know what was going to happen concerning their loved ones here in this particular chapter, those that had died in the Lord. Now, if I may explain just a little bit, when the Bible refers to those that had died in the Lord, it's referring to those that are saved, but that had died physically, okay? The Apostle Paul explains with the statement, for if we believe, according to our text, and what he was doing, it was conditional. In other words, there is a difference, folks. There is a difference when we, when we deal with situations. And, and, uh, and, 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 and so Paul explains that difference. But he says it like this. For if we believe, then this is what's going to happen. 
Folks, before I get started, let me say this. To you that are online, what you believe matters. It is so vitally important because what you believe, it will dictate how you handle life. And so I guess my question is, do you believe? And for those of us that do believe, oh, are we doing what God would have us to do? And, and I hope and pray God will convict your heart. First of all, uh, this morning, what is it that we believe? Amen? What is it that we believe? Paul did say, according to verse number 14, for if we believe, well, what, just anything? Oh, no. I promise you, my friend, without a doubt, not just any belief will do. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says this, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Well, preacher, what, what is that so important for? Because according to what verse 14 says, for if we believe, and here it is, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So apparently, not just any belief will do. I tell you, I, 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 you know, when you, when, you, when you go to a funeral, you don't know who's coming. You don't know if they are a believer or not a believer. And so may I make it plain to you, my friend, this morning, this is something that is so vitally important is when the Bible speaks about, for if we believe, what that belief is, if I may put it in a nutshell, and that is this, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what it is. And the gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that's what Paul was referring to. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. You know, in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And, and, I, and I, I tell you, folks, Sadly enough, there's a lot of false gospel. There's a lot of false preaching going on today. And many are misled. And, and what they think is the gospel. And what they think will get them to heaven is not at all. That's why it's so important that you know what you believe. And that that belief is based upon the truth of the word of God. You see, we're talking about the gospel this morning. For if we believe, so if I were to ask you, my friend, has there ever been a time in your life where God revealed to you you're in need of a Savior and you called upon the name of the Lord to save your soul? Well, come on, folks. I tell you, you might say, well, preacher, I mean, I've heard you preach before. You've said that many a times. Well, I, I, I know that. But the question is, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Because, my friend, truly, you know, what you and I believe makes a difference in your life. Some, some, of, some people who claim to be saved, there's no difference at all in their life. The way they handle sorrow, the way they handle uh, life in general, their hopes, their expectations. I tell you, we ought to be different because why? Because we're saved. Because we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what Paul is referring to. There is a difference when you and I believe. Oh, really? Oh, sure. You better believe it. Oh, my goodness. When, we, when you gather around and because you have lost one of your loved ones and you gather there at the funeral, my friend, there's a big difference if you believe. Oh, big difference. And so, let's look at that difference. See, I believe there ought to be a difference in your life because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, come on, folks, I tell you, that's, that's the way it ought to be. May we not sit there in silence or, or you know, uh, and, and just kind of, what are you talking about? You ought to know what, what I'm talking about because it is that difference because of what God does in our lives. 
that, that, that ought to show up in our lives and, and it ought to fill us with hope and it ought to fill us with joy. Why? Not because of us, but because of who saved us. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's a big difference. This world needs to know there's a difference. I'm tired. I'm tired of this world saying, you know what? You have nothing better than what we have. Can I tell you? We do have. We do have something better. God is better and God is so much better. But the way that some people leave is, live, it's almost as if it's not better. We live, we live, oh, I can, I can, I can, you know, we, we love to claim the fact that he's our savior, but we don't want to live for him. We try to live without God. We try to live, you know, we don't need to go to church. We don't need to pray. We don't need to look in the word of God. We don't need to feed our, feed our souls. We'll feed our soul with everything else. But we won't feed our, our souls with the word of God. And somehow and other people, can, people think, and that's okay. Oh, it's not. Because you won't know what is, what is better. You won't know the difference. Unless you're saved. Well, the question is, what's different? Well, in this particular text, you're going to find out the Apostle Paul, we're going to look at three different things. That's different because we believe. Are you ready? Number one, first of all, a difference in our sorrow. It's quite obvious, it really is. For the Bible says in verse number 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In other words, and you know what the word asleep refers to, don't you? It's those that have died in the Lord. Those that have died in Christ. So, so, so he says, hey, I don't want you to, be misunderstood. I don't want you to misunderstand what, what I'm saying. I, I don't want you to be ignorant of, of, of the truth here. And that is this. He says, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And so he says, when it comes to sorrowing, because we believe, there's a difference. And by the way, he actually points out the difference right here in our text. He says, there are those that sorrow, and then there are those that sorrow without hope. Whoa. I don't know about you, but that's, that's, that's serious stuff. And I tell you, when you gather at a funeral because your loved one had died in the Lord, you know, you're, you, you know and there, there are those that are sorrowing, yes, but then there are those that are sorrowing that they have no hope. My goodness, that is, that is sad. That is sad to, 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 to look at life and to look at your situation and there is no hope. Folks, I tell you, we don't have to live that way. And please, let me, let, me, let me mark it for you and let me draw a line in the sand and say, there is a difference for those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because there is a difference in sorrowing. In other words, there's a difference in how you and I handle problems in life. There's a difference. What is that difference? That difference is in God and the promises of God. That's what it is. Bible talks about, he says, he says in verse number 14, or verse number 13, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. You see, for those of us that believe, we have hope. Well, folk, but preacher, doesn't our hope stop when people die? <laughs> no, it sure doesn't stop there. Hallelujah. I tell you, if anything, uh, there is joy because we know this world is not our home. That this is not all we've got. Hallelujah. But we have a home in heaven. Our hope is in the Lord. But by the way, can I tell you, it just, it just doesn't apply there either. Can I tell you, I can get up each and every day, and even though it's difficult, and even though it's hard, I have hope that, that, you know, that the things that I do in this world you know, as I, as I do them for the Lord Jesus Christ, it matters. And that without a doubt, I know that I, I'm laying up treasures in heaven. And that, that, that there are things that, that, that do matter on this, on this earth. 
that, that when you do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am so very thankful. There's not much hope in this world, that's for sure. But boy, there is, there is so much hope in this world because of God, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you may not get to choose how much money you have. You know, it might be that, that you were, uh, you know, you're a, uh, born in a, in a, in a poor family. Uh, you didn't inherit anything. Let's say, for example, you, uh, you know, there are things that happened and, and someone took all your money. That's unfortunate. But can I tell you? Thank God our hope is not in our money. Thank God that my hope is, you know, I tell you, uh, I, I, the only, you know, it would be sad if the only reason why you got up every morning and faced the day with confidence is because you had money in the bank. But, but what if that money left? What if that money went? What if you spent that money? Then what? Well, then I'll be, I'll be sad. Can I tell you? God says there's another way to live. And that hope, that living is putting your trust in him. Not only as your savior, but you look to him each and every day. And the reason why I, I, I get up each and every day is not because of my money or not because of, of whatever. It is because of the Lord. And that, that is how you and I ought to learn to live. Because without a doubt, because I believe, it makes a difference when it comes to dealing with life. Yeah, we sorrow. We're just like, just like everybody else. We're going to miss our loved ones. And, and boy, what a transition period of time that's going to be. And it's going to be difficult. And, 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 and I heard I had someone tell me a couple of days ago, Preacher, I don't, I don't know how I, I'm going to be able to get through this. Oh, but I was so very thankful that I was at least able to say, but God will be there for you. I was so very thankful to say, you know, let's talk about where your loved one is right now. Oh, we, when we did that, you know, smile came on this lady's face and, and she was so thankful, at least for that. Because you see, yeah, we sorrow, but not like those that have no hope. For we have hope. How come do you have hope, preacher? It's because we believe. Well, where does that hope come from? Well, it comes from the Lord. It comes from the truths of God's word. God's promises, if you please. To be absent from the body is to be present with the... That's right, the Lord. Amen. Don't you think... God will keep his promises? Don't you think when he said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? Did he do what he said he would do? Well, amen, he sure did. How do you know that? Well, first of all, my God's not a liar. Thank you very much. But he has proven to be faithful every step of the way. In other words, I can count on God. I can count on. So when life falls apart and things don't happen, you know, work out the way that, that, that I thought it should have gone. But because I believe, my belief is in the Lord, then I can handle my sorrow differently. Yeah, I sorrow, but not like those that have no hope. Because my faith in God makes a difference. Number two. Not only a difference in our sorrow, but also a difference in our eternity. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> you, excuse me? Yes, I can stand here and without any reservation say, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Oh, you can't, you can't know that, preacher. Well, because I believe I can. See, that's where belief makes a difference. Well, how do you know that, preacher? How do you know? Well, it's sure not based upon my knowledge, but it is based upon the Word of God. 
For the Bible says in verse number 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, come on, listen to me, stay with me. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them or go before them which are asleep. By the way, the Lord's coming back again. According to verse 16 though, listen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. <sighs> Here it is. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with who? Be with the Lord. Be with the Lord. Can I tell you? That's eternity. We're going to be with the Lord which is in heaven. We're going to be with the Lord forever. You see, oh, oh, I'm sorry, maybe you missed the point. It's only if we believe. Because my eternity will be with him. I will be eternally with my Lord. Bible says, for God so loved the world, through John 3, 16. I love this, love this, love this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? That whosoever, here it is, believeth in him... Should not perish. The word perish there refers to spending eternity without God. Should not perish, but have, here it is, everlasting life. Question is, preacher, how long is everlasting? <laughs> it's a long time. It's a long time. Folks, we're talking about eternity. You see, every person will live eternally somewhere. Either you will live eternally with God or you will live eternally without God. We refer to one as heaven, we refer to the other as hell. You see, because we believe, it makes a difference. I don't think I have to explain to this crowd that heaven's a good place and hell is not a good place. I know we live in a world today that would like to make hell a party. It's not. I know there are those that want to trivialize this decision. That it really is not that important because, you know, really and truly, when we die, that's it. I'm sorry. Apparently no one told God that. Because God believes, and by the way, he's right, that once a man or a woman dies, there is life after that. We call it eternity. And my friend, my question though to you is this, where will you spend eternity? I tell you, we live in a world today where so many want to know that answer to that question. Every time I go to a funeral, can I tell you what's on the hearts and the minds of all the loved ones that are living, that are there at that funeral? You know, you know the question that is most often asked at funerals? I wonder if my loved one's saved. I wonder where they're going to spend eternity. I wonder if they're going to make it to heaven. You see, everyone wants to know. And my friend, believe it or not, the closer we get to death, the more the subject of eternity is on our minds. Where am I going to spend eternity? But I'm so very thankful. I don't have to worry about that. I'm so very thankful that it wasn't me, but it was God that loved me so much that he sent his only begotten son. And it was because of Jesus Christ. You know, I always love to, to think of, of salvation like this. And that is, it's a gift. It's a gift that is offered. My friend, you may be here today and believe it or not, God has knocked at your heart's door. What he's doing is he's 
convicting you. He's letting you know that you need a Savior. There's never been a time in your life where you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Or there may be some kind of belief that you've been trusting in that will not save you. Well, by the way, God knows. Even if you're confused, God isn't. But God is concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. That's why he sent his only begotten son. My friend, if there's never been a time in your life where you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, God loves you. And he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, as, as Paul was writing to this group of people, helping them to understand what's going to happen when the Lord comes back, he says, you know what? If we believe then our eternity is secure. Because as, as the Bible says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I tell you, that's comforting. But, Lord, but folks, you know what? I'm so very thankful. I don't have to worry about that now. I can go and, 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 and be busy serving the Lord and not wonder, I wonder if I'm going to make it. No, God, God took care of that. And when God convicted my heart and offered me that gift of salvation, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, I had, I, had, I had to make a choice. I either could reject it or I could accept it. By the grace of God, I accepted the gift of salvation. Oh, I tell you, I didn't deserve it, that's for sure. And I hope and pray that everyone that is listening to my voice, you know that you accepted that gift as well. That you know that you got saved. But if not, you may be one that you know without a doubt. No, I, I rejected it. I didn't want anything to do with it. Can I tell you? God loves you. And he wants you to be saved. And you're not going to get saved on your terms. You'll get saved on God's terms. But if God knocks at your heart's door, that's the loving grace and mercy of God reaching out to you, saying, I can save you. But you've got to be willing to submit and say, yes, I need that gift. Would you save me? The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, my friend, belief makes a difference. Oh, my goodness. It makes a difference in, in how we sorrow. It makes a difference in our eternity. And then lastly, my friend, it also makes a difference in our relationships. What do you mean, preacher? Well, in our context, you know, as, as the Apostle Paul is writing, he's writing to those that that believe he's writing to those that are going through difficult times so he's reminding them of of what's going to happen he's he's reminding them yeah we sorrow but not like those that have no hope yeah one of these days we're going to be with the lord forever amen but for those that were still alive he turns to them if i may put it like that and he says you that are still living, you've got people around you that are going through difficult times. So this is what you should do. For the Bible says it like this in verse number 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Can I tell you, being saved, believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ... It makes a difference in our relationships. First of all, I want, I want to point out to you, Paul is encouraging these people to comfort one another. Well, come on. Why don't we backbite and fight and, and, and just chew each other up and spit them out? Why don't we do that? We don't do that. How come? Because we're saved. You see, we have the love for the brethren. We love one another. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that, that uh, but you know what? I tell you, 
I've met a lot of people that I have found hard to love. <laughs> but can I tell you, by the grace of God, I was able to love them. Uh, did I need some instruction? Oh, you better believe it. I cannot tell you how many times my wife says, honey. And she would tell me, now, come on, you don't need to do that. You know, and I got in the flesh and all that stuff. And, and, and you know, but, but she was right and I had to repent. I had to get things right. You know, I, I'm sorry. And I, and, I, and, I, and I was able to love. Sometimes I had to, I had to see an example of that. Sometimes, I, well, what does that look like? You know, some of us have been raised up. Boy, if anyone does anything wrong to us, boy, we, we get them back, don't we? I mean, if someone does us harm, they'll pay. But you didn't get that from God, did you? Oh, no. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ makes a difference in our lives and how we treat one another. And I tell you, this world needs to see disciples of Christ who love, who love their Lord and who love one another. And so he says, hey, brethren, wherefore comfort one another. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's about time us, we that are Christians, learn to do that. That we learn to care for one another. That we, that we come alongside one another and, and, and encourage and, and do what we can. That's the way it ought to be. And I tell you, because we're saved, there ought to be a difference in our relation. Husbands, hey, you're saved, aren't you? You know the Lord Jesus Christ. You got a wife there. You ought to love her. Your, 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 your relationship and your... Come on, listen to what I'm saying to you. Our relationship in our homes, you claim to be a Christian home, then act like it. Exercise love. Learn to comfort one another and, and, and do those things because the Spirit of God that lives inside of you will lead you to do that. It's the way it ought to be. I tell you, when someone says, yeah, we're a Christian couple, that ought to make a difference. That ought to mean something. No, we don't sleep around. No, no, we're faithful to one another. Hey, we're, we're, we're doing what God would have us to do. That's what ought to be said. And we that are saved, that are, that are acting so ungodly, we ought to be ashamed. We ought to repent and get right. I tell you, do Christian people do bad? Not at all. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm, not, that's, I'm not telling the truth there. Yes. We're not perfect. Christians are not perfect. But can I tell you, in spite of that, we who know better, we that have the Spirit of God living inside of us, we're still supposed to love one another. I tell you, I, by the way, familiar with Matthew chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount? Did you, ever read, did you ever read that sermon? It was, by the way, the Sermon on the Mount is written to disciples. Just keep that in mind. These are men that, were, that, that had devoted their lives to Christ. And so as he teaches them, he goes through a series of truths and principles that they needed to know. And oh my goodness. We all like that blessed is the man that, you know, we like that part, don't we? That's part of the Sermon on the Mount. But what we don't like is it gets to the point where it says, love those that uh, treat you bad and... and uh, uh, pray for those that, that despitefully use you. Uh, what? Uh, uh, do I have to do that? Yeah. If you're a disciple of Christ, you should. Uh, that's not easy, preacher. No, it's not easy. That's why the Lord's got to love through us. And that's why, that's why I, may, you know, I may not like you at all, but I'm going to love you because God wants me to love you. And that's the way it ought to be. Bible says... 
here in our text. Wherefore, comfort one another. And so our hearts turn to our brothers and our sisters and, and our family and, 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 and our hearts go out to them because, you know, we're concerned for them. And so therefore we ought to comfort one another. My goodness, how families need that. But the difference not only is how we treat one another, but the difference is also is what we use to treat one another. For the Bible says it like this, wherefore comfort one another with these words in other words the these words refer to the truths of god the, the the doctrines the truths that paul had just explained to them he says take these words and use it to comfort one another in other words the fact that our loved ones is 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 is, is home in heaven now hallelujah that's comforting the, the fact that hey one of these days we're going to see him again hallelujah that's comforting one of these days, we're going to all get to heaven. Love that song, by the way. When we all get to heaven. Anyway, I'm not a singer, but that's, that, that's the song. But the truths are wonderful. And it's comforting. In other words, our comfort comes from the truths of God. And as Christians, because we believe it is those truths that we use in our relationships with one another... Our relationships are based upon that truth. Hallelujah. You see, I can say without a doubt, because of our belief, because of our belief, it makes a difference in our relationships. But you might say, but preacher, is, there's not much of a difference in my relationship. There ought to be. And if because there isn't, you need to find out why it isn't. First of all, are you saved? Secondly, then maybe you need to start living according to the word of God and not according to your flesh. You see, my friend, God is faithful. And God's word will do what, he, what it said it will do. I guarantee it. So if it's not working, it's not because the word of God's not working. It's broken. Nope, nope, nope. God's word never breaks. What's the problem, preacher? <laughs> it's you and I. That's the problem. So would you be willing to submit? Would you be willing to admit I was wrong? Would you be willing to say, you know, I didn't do it like I was supposed to. I was more fleshly instead of spiritual. Well, maybe it's time to repent of the flesh and start walking in the Spirit like you should. You see, because our relationships should be different because we believe. We ought to be comforting our families, not hurting them. We ought to be having a relationship that is right before the Lord, not a relationship that is shameful. Amen. If you love God, then you will be willing to do what he says. I know, that's hard, but it's the truth. It is. May we take seriously our belief in the gospel. May we let God's truth guide and comfort us through this world. <laughs> May we seriously live our belief before our family and others. I cannot tell you how important it is. Have you forgotten there are children around you as they watch you live your life? And don't we want our children to believe the God who can save them? Don't we want our, our family members to believe that there is a God who sent his only begotten son so that they might be able to be saved. Then why don't we live it before them? Why don't we teach it, <clears throat> this belief to our children? It's that important. Because what you believe makes a big difference in how you behave. 
Paul says, if you believe, we'll sorrow differently, our eternity will be different, and our relationships will be different, without a doubt. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you so very much for your amazing grace. Dear God, thank you so much for the precious truths of your word. Oh, dear God, work in our hearts and our lives. May we rejoice and may we be thankful that we're saved. Father, if there's someone here today that, that doesn't know that, they're doubting that. Dear God, may they get that settled today. And Lord, for those of us that do believe, Lord, isn't it time that we take it seriously? Isn't it time to, to, to uh, get our lives right before you? Lord, help us to do that. Because we live in a world that needs to see and hear the precious truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Lord, have your will and way. Bless now in this invitation time as we just sing. Lord, may your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. What song do you got there? Just as I am. We're going to sing just a verse of invitation. You that are online, you need to do business with God. Do it right there. Come on. But as we sing, you do business with God. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. pray if you needed to come to the Lord that you did it today folks I tell you I encourage you let us live for the Lord Jesus Christ what you believe makes a big difference hope you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ God bless you have a wonderful day